Hello again. Welcome back to my second lecture. I'm Douglas Allen, Burnaby Mountain Professor of Economics at Simon Fraser University, located in beautiful British Columbia. And I'm the author of The Institutional Revolution. In this lecture, I'm going to start with the assumption that some type of institutional puzzle has been found. My book contains many such puzzles found in pre-modern Britain, the period of time between 1500 and approximately 1850. For example, why did officers in the army, but not officers in the navy, purchase their military commissions? Why did the navy shoot captains and admirals from time to time? Why did aristocrats exist? And why did they invest so heavily in useless things like learning Latin? playing the piano, and in their parks? And why did they get so wealthy while doing such apparently wasteful things? Why were there no modern police in the world, or modern prisons? And why did judges own the offices in their courthouse? So many institutional puzzles. The question is now, how are such puzzles to be approached? The answer to that question starts with the great economist Ronald Coase and his famous paper on social costs. So many economists never get past the first 10 pages of this paper, where Coase articulates what is now known as the Coase Theorem. One definition of the Coase Theorem might go as follows. The allocation of resources is independent of the distribution of property rights when transactions costs are zero. Many reject Coase at this point because clearly resource allocation does depend on the distribution of rights. Others embrace the idea as a policy tool and feel that all problems are resolved if all rights are just allocated and then enforced. Both positions are wrong and miss the point of Coase's argument. The core idea of Coase is found in section six of the problem of social costs. Speaking about how a society organizes production to achieve an optimal allocation, he said there were a number of choices. Society could use a market, could have a firm, maybe government intervention, or perhaps do nothing at all. He concluded the following, the problem is one of choosing the appropriate social arrangement for dealing with the harmful effects. He went on to explain that the criteria on which this choice is based is transactions costs. Unfortunately, Coase never defined transactions costs in 1960, just like he did not define it in 1937 with his paper on the firm. Also unfortunate, in 1935, John Hicks defined transactions costs as any type of friction and the profession has been off the rails on the topic of transactions costs ever since. I will address the definition of transactions costs in the next lecture. But for now, let's just consider the matter of Coasean logic. Coase first argued that if transactions costs are zero, then the laws, social norms, the rules, and any other type of property right does not matter for how resources are allocated. Since the neoclassical model assumes zero transactions costs, then the neoclassical model is incapable of explaining any type of organization. For example, in the classical general equilibrium model, prices work for free. And so prices do all of the allocating of inputs and outputs. There is no other organization. The point of the Coase theorem is not to represent any reality, nor to suggest a policy of private property. Rather, it is to demonstrate the uselessness of the neoclassical model in explaining organizational matters. Coase then went on to argue that when transactions costs are positive, laws, social norms, rules, and all other types of rights do matter for resource allocation. Since they matter, they are then chosen or designed, and the ones that we observe today are the ones that have survived. Hence the grand institutional idea 
that follows from Coase reasoning is this, that all the institutions and all the organizations that we observe are the result of maximizing wealth net of the transactions costs of those organizations. Considering transactions costs is a necessary component of any explanation of an organization or an institution. This was the point that Coase was making in the early part of his article, and it is the great idea for which he won the Nobel Prize. Furthermore, a consideration of transactions costs is sufficient. It's all that we need. There is no need to introduce risk or other unobservable characteristics of the utility function when trying to understand the organizational puzzles around us.